Hey everyone, it's Sunday the 11th of August and it's 3.30 in the afternoon. Right, today's video, we're going to be looking at some diecast. Yep, I've been busy again over the past week. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff that I picked up from the diecast guy, including some 176 scale models for the model railway. Um, and I've got a bag full of stuff on the floor, which is actually some brand new stuff in there as well. I got out of Sainz they finally had some majorette in stock. They've been out of stock for months. I hate that store, I really do. Um, and a load of stuff from yesterday's car boot at Alsham. Now, the next video is also going to be diecast model related because over there, off camera, I've got a big red chest full to the top of diecast models. I just picked up from the diecast guy for 25 quid. There's a hell of a lot there for 25 quid. Um, so I'll sort through that and whatnot in the next video, which I'm going to do after this one. But I'm not sure what's going to be the easiest way to record it because that is a big box. I don't think I'm going to get it on the desk. Actually, no, I'm not going to get it on the desk. Um, I may actually have to film that on the floor with like the camera doing like a, a bird's eye view of it. I think that's going to be the easiest option. Anyway, let's get into this lot, shall we? So, you can see some of the 176 scale models here. Um, I've also got a little box here that I picked up from the diecast guy the other day. Um, yeah, I think what I'll do, I'll, we'll have a look at what's on the desk first. So if I actually just pan the camera round. So that's the little box. That was only £10. I've already been through this box. And there was a good chunk of it I took out and put into the um, charity shop pile. Because it's just stuff that I didn't feel was really worth sticking on eBay. Speaking of eBay, I have just listed a whole bunch of diecast models um, up on there. Various stuff, there's some Lido, some Matchbox, there's some Corgi, um, and I've still got a heck of a lot to go. Um, so tedious and repetitive, you can get bored very easy, very quickly, but it had to be done. So it's all up there, everything is 99p start. I do combine shippage, shippage? shipping on multiple um, purchases and whatnot so right I'm not going to show you everything in here because a lot of it is not really that interesting not in my opinion um, I've got a little Tom and Jerry vehicle there from Corgi I have got another one or two of these but this is in by far the best condition um, we've got some Hot Wheels fantasy stuff in here I'll just show you my favorites out of this box I think Hot Wheels Chevy Bel Air Nomad Corgi Jaguar that I've never seen in this colour. It's the first time I've seen that one. Um, another vintage Hot Wheels. I think that's a Bronco. It's got to be a Ford. It's got a Ford badge on the door. So I'm thinking Bronco. Um, a couple of these Matchbox um, Superfire speedboats in there. That one's got a blue figure, the other one's got a yellow figure. Because I was going to get rid of one until I realised that there was two variations of them. That I didn't know before. This one intrigues me. Does anyone know anything about this? I'm going to keep this aside actually and take a photo of it separately and post it to a few places. Just to see if I can get some info. Because that looks like it's got to be limited edition or a special release or something. It's nice and it's Hot Wheels. Um, vintage Hot Wheels bus, a bit rough, but I think I would after that many years of being played with. And we've got a Matchbox Ferrari Testarossa with the old um, laser wheels from the laser wheel series. And I have got, a, I think it's a blue version of this as well, with the laser wheels. And I've got the red one. That I'm going to keep out to one side because I've got all of these together in a box over there, including a few mint ones. Uh, what else have I got in here? Corgi Hot Rodder. 
I can't remember if I've already got this or not, so I've just kept that until I can confirm it. Uh, we've got some some Hot Wheels Fantasy stuff. That's quite interesting. A little corgi fireboat. I might actually put one of these on eBay because I think I've got three of these now. So I really do like these. But none of them, I'm pretty certain there's meant to be like a little canopy on the back, and none of them have got one. Then we've got like a Hot Wheels Custom there. Uh, Hot Wheels Fantasy car that I took a liking to. There's another one somewhere and I can't find it. Little Hot Wheels motorbike. Where is it? There it is. It looks like it's based on like a Chevy wagon of some sort. Yeah, I don't. There's some Hot Wheels fantasy stuff that I don't mind. But I tend to not keep too many of them. And I found that, which believe it or not, is Hot Wheels. Which is a Chevy Silverado. It's a squashed one put on a very large chassis. <laughs> and a little Mitsubishi Eclipse. And that's it for that box. In fact, I'm going to keep this box up here. So I've got some loose stuff in that bag on the floor there that I can put this in. Uh, those do I need to keep out. Uh, right. So, still with the die cast guy stuff. We've got Minix Caravan for OO Gauge Railway. And then we've got this, which I believe is a Kararama brand, um, Toyota RAV4. They always lose the bloody hubcaps. <laughs> so this one's missing a hubcap. I'm not really sure what I think about the Kararama stuff. They're not bad. But I do believe the Oxford die-cast, which is what all this is, is way better. Yeah, that would, that would still go on a, a layout. <laughs> Quite easy, I'm going to put them there, aren't I? Right. So, picked this up from the die-cast guy when I got most of this during the week. The little uh, Corgi Ford console classic. Now, at first glance, when I saw this, I thought that's a Ford Anglia, but it's not. This is like a bigger version of the Anglia. It's got a similar shape with that rear window, hasn't it? Very similar. But it's not. I mean, it's got twin headlights for stars, and I do believe it's a much larger car. And then I've got a Vanguard's Hillman Minx. I do like the Vanguard's models. I mean, I know Lido did Vanguards for a while. I know, Cor I believe Corgi still does them. Um, I'm not really sure who I would say is or was the better manufacturer of them. I just think I think they're all nice. Then I've got this, and it sort of works. I actually got this from the diecast guy yesterday when he was at the car boot sale. So it's a dinky BMW um, 2000 Tilux. Tilux. It's got a AAA battery in it. Now I did have to take this apart and clean up all the contacts, but it's got two light bulbs in here, two light pipes as well. And the idea is you really need it in a dark room to see it because they are quite dim. But when you roll these wheels around, there's a little cam that flicks on a little metal plate in there and completes connection and makes the circuit momentarily. So you, they're meant to flash like hazards when you push it along, you know, like indicators. But they're quite dim. And the other annoying part is it's got that crack in the rear window. Now I'll have a look on eBay because you never know, I might be able to find another one cheap. That might be, you know, in just as rough condition as this, but have complete windows, and I could perhaps, you know, put the windows in this one, as I know this one works. But I can't show you it, because uh, it's 
very hard to see him in this light. I, I do think that was a nice buy. Right, I'm going to do the other model railway stuff in a minute. So, when I picked up that big chest of cars, I also got this. Because I do like a Ford Escort. I would prefer it was a Mark II. <laughs> um, but still, I don't mind a Mark I here and there. So I'll keep that one in its box. And I've always said I'm a rebel and I like to open up boxes, but sometimes, especially with something like this, I like to keep it in the box. It looks like it has been opened at some, yeah, it has been opened at some point. Um, but yeah, I will keep that in its box. We've got another Vanguard's model. Got Mark II Ford Cortina 1600 GT Lancashire Police. Now he only charged me seven quid for this, which in my opinion is too cheap. From what I've seen, the average is like 10 to 12 pounds depending on the vehicle as well. I mean some of the police cars do demand a bit of a, a slightly higher price than that, but yeah, I do feel he um undercharged me there. I do feel a bit bad for that as well. Anyway, that's a nice model. It's got all the mirrors and the um, certificate of uh, authentication in there as well. So it is complete. I'm not going to put the mirrors on because I know full well if I do that, I'm going to snap the damn things off. I know I will because I've already done it on a few. So I'm not going to do it. It'll be a total waste of time. <laughs> now. <clears throat> The ones that some of you would have been waiting for. The um, OO gauge, 176 scale, Oxford die cast models. So I've got this um, Ford Cortina gift set. So we've got a white Mark I Lotus Cortina on the end here. And we've got the Mark II in the middle and a Mark III up on this end. Now I've been asked by both my friend Kat and the diecast guy if I'm going to leave these in the boxes or use them on the layout. Um, I'm going to use them on the layout but for now they will stay in the boxes and I will likely keep hold of the boxes um, just for future use just in case I want to put them back in here for storage or whatever. So I've got those. And we've got a big pile here in fact one two three four five of these I picked up today as well. I'll, I'll go through the ones I picked up the other day. So we've got a Rover SD1, which is one of my favourites here. Absolutely love this. And one thing I do like about these Oxford diecasts, look at that, when I move it around, all that chrome detail on this does actually give a sort of shine. <laughs> and believe it or not, if you've got a magnifying glass, or if you've got very good eyes, mine aren't, but there is actually writing on the rear of each car, you know, like Rover, whatever, and the number plates are eligible, you can read them. I mean, in, <clears throat> I don't know why they went to that much detail. Who's going to see that at a distance on a layout? Maybe if you've got very good eyesight, you might. Um, I've never had 100% eyesight, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, I mean, I do appreciate the detail, especially on something so small. Um, which is probably why I can appreciate why these are not cheap to buy. You know, and then if you want articulated lorries and other commercial vehicles as well, they're not cheap either. I mean, this has got a price tag of £5.20 on this, and that's a little MGB GT. Try saying that ten times fast, you know, MGB GT. Oh, I managed it. I bet if I was thinking about it, I wouldn't be able to do it. We've got a little MGB. We have got another Lotus Cortina. This time we've got the Mark II. I know my stepdad's got one on his layer, but I cannot remember if it's a Mark I or a Mark II. 
Um, I'm going to have to have a look when I'm next over. Next up, a little Riley Elf. Now, I don't know what shop these came from originally. They've all got the same price sticker on. This one's $7.99. Why is something smaller than the rest more expensive? Is it because that was a bit more fiddly to uh, manufacture, maybe? Because I'd love to know how they put all that intricate little detail on it. Is it done by hand? I really don't know much about Oxford as a company. But I know they do it for O-Gage as well. Right, next up. Triumph Stag. I actually recently watched a guy on YouTube do like a part restoration on one of these. And he sprayed it a lovely modern metallic green. And a lot of people wouldn't like that because, you know, they, they would prefer to see a classic car in a classic colour. You know, like just a, a bland green like this, not a modern metallic green. But that did look tasty. Which, ironically, is the name of his um, YouTube channel, Tasty Classics. So. <clears throat> okay, so the last one I got during the week is this little uh, Vauxhall Viva, which is another one of my favourites. And from reading the price sticker right on the bottom, this is eight ninety nine. It was eight ninety nine in whatever shop that price sticker belongs to. I don't know where it came from. So I re that puzzles me because I would have thought, you know, model cars of this size would have had a set price, perhaps larger vans, you know, a bit more, etc. But it doesn't seem to work. Ooh, pardon me, like that with uh, Oxford models. Right, that's better. Now, the other five. I might already have one of these. And if I have, it's going to be too new for my stepdad's layout, so I'll probably end up giving that one to Cat. Um, so, it's not this one, it's a little XR3i Ford Escort down here. I'm pretty certain I've got that. I think. I'll have to double check. So we've got this, uh, I believe it's a Mark III, mint green Capri. <laughs> what a colour choice. Yeah, you know, look at that little detail on it. Absolutely stunning detail on these. Look. I'm trying to get it so the light doesn't reflect off the case. I love them. And we've got a, I'm not sure if it's a Mark 1 or a Mark 2. It's got square headlights, which I think is the Mark 1. And then I think they kept this rear body shape and taillights, but changed the headlights to round for a Mark 2. Correct me if I'm wrong. Not vinyl roof. I've got a few Capris now, so I might decide on what I want to keep and what I don't want to keep. Uh... Another Mark III Cortina. Twin headlights as well. Is that like a gear or something? I ain't got me reading the squids on. I'm just trying to read what that... Oh, it just says Sunset. Is that the colour? what they call the colour sunset. Yeah. Now this one I'm going to definitely keep because one, I absolutely adore this shade of blue. Uh, purple? Blue? Blue. Very dark blue. And it's a Mark 1 Ford Escort. I want a Mark 2. <laughs> Mark 1 seemed to be a much more popular model to produce than Mark 2's. And here's the little XR3i. Should send that to my little brother actually because he loves them. Right, so that is it for the model railway stuff. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anywhere I can stack them. 
out of the way because obviously when I do the next video I'm going to need some floor space um, and I'll just leave them there and I actually you know what I'm going to leave those there and I'll deal with that in a minute so car boot stuff and well brand new stuff I'm going to do the I'll do the brand new stuff first actually so it's all major it and I think I'm going to sneeze because my hay fever is playing up today it's absolutely fine yesterday but today well it's making me sneeze all right so I've got a whole bunch of brand new majorettes as I was saying earlier Sainsbury's has not had these in for quite a few months at least four months so I've got Volkswagen Beetle and yes I will be opening these up eventually um, an Audi R8 Coupe taxi very fast taxi uh, Lamborghini Countach LP1 804 Nissan Z, I actually quite like that one again, I actually like that dark blue for those that may not know blue, especially dark blue, is one of my favourite colours ok, we've got colour changes here Mustang GT I think I've got three colour changes in total uh, what's this one? Bugatti Chiron Chiron? Chiron? I can't re remember how you pronounce it PUR Sport Per Sport, Pure Sport, I don't know how you pronounce it I'm not that familiar with um, that sort of car if I'm totally honest Jaguar F-Type R One of two McLaren Senna's I got. I've got this one in red and white. I didn't realise I had two of these either, not until I read the packs when I got home. Uh, is this the other one? Yeah, this is the other one. I've actually got it in a green. I like this one in green. Uh, we've got a couple more, another colour changes here, which is the Dodge Viper SRT. This is the last one. Let me just check. Yep. An Audi S5. Okay. So I actually found this one at a car boot store. That's uh, well, the guy has done it for years. He does it as like a little hobby. Um, he usually sells more like sort of tools and you know petrol powered tools and some bikes and whatnot. But he had this on in a Batmobile like in sort of like a bat cave thing. I believe this is Del Prado. I could be wrong, but it was in like Del Prado style packaging. It doesn't actually say on here what it is though. I do hope that's not two police cars again because they have seriously been busy the last sort of four or five days. I don't know if you can hear the sirens in the background. So I picked that up. <clears throat> and then I got a bunch of uh, loose little stuff which is why I've kept this box open because I put it in there. Let's put these over there because I have got boxes I can put the dink in for. Them. Okay. Oh! forgot a, ma a majorette. Actually, I just realised there's another tractor in here as well, so another tractor somewhere. Yeah, I can see it. So we've got a Voltra T4 tractor, and the other one is a Deutzfahr. Deutzfahr? I think it's Deutz, isn't it? Is that how it's pronounced? <clears throat> right. I think most of what I got in here I got from the same store. There was like three or four boxes of assorted models. So, got a foam tender. This was one that I picked out as an extra one. They allowed me to pick out an extra one. Because I have bought quite a lot from their store. Um, 
Americans. So I've got a Corgi American van, as that's just what it's labelled as. I still haven't decided if that's meant to be a Ford or a Chevy. It's got the AA, well, should have the AA stripe and logo on it. And I've got a Corgi Mark II Transit truck. I've never seen one in orange. I've got green, yellow, blue. I've got a red one. And I've got an orange one. <laughs> um, I couldn't resist this either. A little Siku Mercedes truck with a crane on. I'm not really sure what that's meant to be. It's got a little yellow beacon on the roof as well. It's in lovely condition though. There is actually a vintage Siku somewhere. I don't think it's in this, but it might be in this bag. Or it should be on the desk. Because um, that one, I will show it to you, but that one is quite a rare one. Now, this one's um, a Japanese brand. This is Tamika, which is like a, I suppose, a side product of Tomi. And they still produce models today. That is in absolute lovely condition, but unfortunately, the beacon has disappeared off the roof. So I'm going to have to try and find something to put on there just to complete it. Um, and we've got this little uh, Lido. And I didn't actually realise at first, but this is London Fire Brigade. It's a water tender. Old water tender. We've got a Rolls what? Roll, uh, I'll try that again. Rolls Royce Silver Shadow 2. In silver. I've got this in red and like a burgundy colour, but. That one's okay for a silver one. It's a little bit better than the other one I've got anyway. I've got Corgi Land Rover AA service truck. We have got another Corgi here. It's a little Renault minibus. With hotel something or other written on it. Um, I'll show you that one in a minute. If I was, it's not an interesting vehicle, but I was over the moon to uh, actually find that particular one. Um, so now I got another Corgi Buick Regal. Now this one intrigued me. I've got Mickey Mouse in a fire truck and this is Matchbox. Now I have got a Jeep with Mickey Mouse in it as well. It's in better condition than this. So I'm, I really know nothing about these so I wouldn't mind researching the story behind them. You know, why is there a gigantic Mickey Mouse in a fire truck? Or a Jeep? Is that just like a Disney promotional thing maybe? Like, oh. Yeah, I was right, that Siku is in here, so I'll put that there. We'll have a look at that and the other matchbox in a minute. Right, this I think is a Cararama model as well. Again, sort of 176 scale. It's a BMW um, X5, French fire service, because that's what Pompier is. Pompier, I can't remember how you pronounce that. Uh, now that's not the one I actually got from Carbo, so I'll put that there for a minute, and that one. Ah oh dear, my nose. I do like to grab these cabs when I see them, if they're in reasonable condition. This one's actually in very good condition. It's very common for these bumper corners to get snapped. On these cab overs and the ones with the snoot, they all do it. That bugs me. And the other common thing to happen is that your exhaust pipes get snapped off as well. Majorette fire truck. Another Majorette truck. I'm not sure what that was originally. It seems to have lost whatever was on the back. Same make of truck as the fire truck that's in my hand there, but I actually don't know what the truck is. It doesn't say. It just doesn't actually say anything on the bottom of these. Uh, Corgi truck, my Vico parts, parts. Uh, 
can't see what sort of truck that is. It might be an ID card. This is my second one of these because I really like these majorette um, trucks. I don't think I've got any trailers to go with them though. But yeah, I have got another one of these and I just thought, I really like it, so I'm going to have a couple. I'm not going to get any more. If I see any more, I'm just going to say no. <laughs> that never works, does it? You've got old Matchbox Land Rover Ford Control. Uh, Ford Zodiac from Matchbox. We're missing the hood and the front tyre, but I thought that'd do for some spares. Spare wheels or something for another one. A little uh, truck and trailer from Matchbox. A little yellow cab because I haven't got the yellow version of this. That's why I grabbed that one. Got it in orange, but not yellow. I've only got a Hot Wheels here, which is one I've been looking for for a long time as well because I had this when I was a kid. I've just been looking for it again ever since. This is practically mint, so that was another one I was chuffed to bits to find. Oh, we've got another Corgi American van, just plain blue. I don't know if it had. Oh, actually, the Adidas ones that Corgi did were blue, so maybe this was an Adidas one at one point. And the stickers have been peeled off. Maybe. Um, there's another Corgi that I've never seen before. Obviously the Porsche, but I've never seen it in this sort of racing get-up or colour. I've got a few versions in black, but uh, I didn't have that one. I've got a... Um, a nice example of the Rover SD1 in yellow. I have got it in yellow, but this is a much nicer example. Uh, getting there for the bag now, guys. Got one of these. I can't remember if I've got this or not. Um, you know, and for what these cost, I thought I might as well just grab that one. If I've got it, I'm going to sling it on eBay or something. Another majorette. Don't know what this is though. <laughs> oh, I can't quite read it, it's a bit smudged out. I've got a big old what was a green bus. I've got plenty of matchbox buses in red. Well one might be an ideal restoration project. Right. Now put that bag down there for a minute because I'm still gonna need it. Now you're gonna probably ask. Why on earth did I buy this? Because it's got no roof, you know, it's a complete wreck. Well, it is an old Corgi, and there is one specific reason why I paid the one pound for this. It's still got all four tyres. And I have got Corgis of this era, with this wheel design, missing tyres. So, that's the only reason I bought that, I just want the tyres. And I'm actually surprised that the diecast guy who was at the car because they didn't see this and buy it for that reason as well. Now, got a lovely little Mercedes-Benz Bins ambulance. I've no idea what a Bins ambulance is. Well, it's in reasonable condition. This was just a pound and it was in a little Ziploc bag as well when I bought it. And I've got this one with it. Little Land Rover with the super fast wheels. I did a regular wheels version of this as well. With the luggage on the roof. Now, I already have this one with the luggage on the roof, but as you can see, it's not in as nice condition. It's actually rather rough. Um, I mean, the wheels are okay. A bit bent, but the wheels themselves are okay. So, I'm either going to restore this one or use this baggage on one of the regular wheel versions I've got. Because at least I'll have the original, not a reproduction. Because you can get reproductions of these on eBay. But if I can use an original, I will. But it's hard to come across these with this still on the roof. I like to go missing. Right, just bear with me a sec. I'm just going to clear the majorettes at least out of the way. And then I'll show you the um, other two. The um, vintage rare Siku model and a matchbox. And I'm going to find a tampon for my bloody nostrils. 
Oh, I hate hay fever. It wasn't a problem when I was younger. It's only as I've gotten older, it's just become more of a bloody problem. I think for now, I'm going to put these in. Oh, I've got a few more on the desk to show you as well. I've, I had them buried. <laughs> you can not see them, I've buried. Um, that's the third siren. So we've got this lovely majorette fire truck. I think I paid seven pounds for that, which is roughly what I'd have to pay plus postage on eBay. So as I was watching a few on eBay. Also got another boxed matchbox. That was actually five pounds, but again, going on eBay for something like this. I know these ones aren't worth that much because they're not that sought after, but by the time you factor in postage and whatnot, you're going to probably still be paying more from eBay. So, grab that. That's another one to hang up on the shelf. We've also got another French brand here, Solido Fire Truck. We're missing bits off the back and the ladder though, but the truck itself is in nice condition. And someone has actually glued some blue lights to the roof. It has got a beacon right there. Sticking through the roof. I was going to, as you can see, two of them there. Someone stuck a light bar up on the roof. I actually quite like it, so I'm going to leave it. Uh, and then we've got this. I had to glue the box on because I kept falling off. So I've uh, just super glued it back on. Cold fresh. My Volvo truck. That's what that one is actually a Volvo truck. Now, the first one, the matchbox, doesn't look that interesting really, does it? You know, it's just a utility truck. But these are actually quite rare to find. Probably because they weren't, you know, kids weren't that interested in them, so there's not that many around. Um, but I have literally spent many years looking for one of these, because I had one when I was a kid. And I actually found this just for one pound. And it's got the twin buckets on it. They're still there. They're still present. Now the other one I want, which is the only other version I actually know of. There could be more. But they also did this in yellow, the British Telecom. I think it was British Telecom or it's Telecom, something like that, on it as well. I want to find that one. So I was really over the moon when I found that. I was like, yes, I've been looking for it for years and I've actually found it at last. Now, this one, I've been told by a few people, is quite rare. So it's made by a German company called Siku. Um, and the diecast guy who I got it from, he said it was... Um, well, the only one he could find on Google was on the Siku Museum website. Um, and one that actually matched this one perfectly because there's a few different versions of this it's um, in case you're wondering it's a Ford 17M Turnier Turnier however you would pronounce that in German um, but when I googled it some places called it a Taurus so I assume it's also a Ford Taurus or would be known as a Taurus elsewhere um, you know there's different models of the Taurus that were at least over the years and whatnot. Um, yeah, so the only beige with blue interior and clear windows is actually on the um, Siku Museum website. Now I've seen a white one of these on eBay, missing the hood, and the seller is asking twenty quid for it. That's what I paid for that one. Um, it probably seems like a lot of money, but if it is as rare as I've been told by a number of people, it was probably worth it. And in fairness, you know, this was made between 1968, no, 1963 and 1968. I don't think it was actually as old as that, but apparently it is, according to the Siku Museum. So, that's actually one of my favourite cars. I showed this to a friend of mine over on Discord 
and it kind of surprised him that it was rare because he's like oh, it doesn't look anything special it just looks like a toy car and he's absolutely right it doesn't look like a limited edition model or a special release or anything like that does it but it's still that's a bit like this you know that's nothing special really is it you know it's just a utility truck by matchbox but again it's quite a rare one to find i mean i must have been looking for that for at least 20 years and i'm not kidding Mind you, I didn't really look on eBay, so maybe I should have looked on eBay a bit more. I might have found one. Um, anyway, that is actually it for this video, so I'm going to shut this video down, take a break, and uh, get that ready. I'm kind of looking forward to that, and kind of not, because that's the biggest box of diecast I have ever bought but it was cheap <laughs> am I gonna find some nice stuff in I don't think the diecast guys even looked through it he just bought it cheap this morning at Stalham car boot and then just decided it wasn't really for him so sort of uh, fobbed it off to me <laughs> I don't mind, I'll get what I want out of it, and if there's anything I feel is worth going on eBay, I'll put it in the boxes to go on eBay, and anything else will just go to charity. Um, as I said, everything I put on eBay is a 99p start, whether well, it's a die-cast car or some other random item. There was some random stuff I wanted to put on eBay today, and I can't remember what it was. Can you two remember? No? Okay. Oh, you two are going to need feeding. I better do those as well. I need to clear some floor space. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. And, uh, you know, consider subscribing. It's totally free to do so. That just helps you follow the channel and whatnot. Um, and in the video description, I will leave links to my other two YouTube channels. I've got two more. I've got the gaming channel and the Lego channel. Um, I've also got the Discord server, I've got my Twitch channel, and I've also started putting my email address down below. Just as another avenue for people to have a chat, I suppose, you know. You want to have a chat about something in specific, and you don't like use Discord, or you haven't got me on Facebook, or whatever. You can contact me with that one. I am thinking of setting up a Facebook page as well. So... Yeah, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.